Discipleship classes every Monday night, 6 p.m. Neighborhood Outreach every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Reagan Park. Evening service every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Intercessory Prayer, every Monday, following classes, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Men's Ministry, breakfast at Denny's, 8 o'clock, November the 5th. Ladies Meeting, brunch and bracelets, November 12th, 10.30 a.m. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. Good morning, good morning, everyone. If y'all want to go ahead and stand with me, we're going to go ahead and get service started. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done Conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great. He did your freedom, awaken the life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done Every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things, God. You do great. heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great we did see your freedom awaken the life oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great oh hero of heaven you conquer the grave
the same God of yesterday and today and tomorrow will be forever. Amen. That he is consistently working. Yes. That even whenever we're tired, even whenever we're stressed, he always pulls through for us. That people will let us down every time, but he is the God who never fails, forsakes, leaves us. Yes. Amen. He walks with us every day. So let's continue to praise him this morning. Amen. I have heard a sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and minds, healing brokenness. I hear a generation breaking through despair. I hear a generation. Full of faith declare And our song it will be Out of the darkness we will rise and sing He is faithful He is glorious And He
proclaim my love for him cause he is faithful he is glorious and he is Jesus and all my hope is in him he is freedom he is healing right now he is home joy and love and peace and life cause he is faithful he is glorious and he is jesus in all my hope is in him he is freedom he is healing right now he is hope joy love and peace and love in every way wonderful beautiful you are glorious you match this in every way wonderful beautiful you are glorious and match this in of him this morning amen just to sit in his presence i feel like sometimes the lyrics of songs can distract us from what god's trying to speak to us amen whenever you truly are just still whenever you're quiet he begins to do a new thing amen the bible it says be still and know when have you taken the time to be still with him This is the place we come to, to encounter God and to find peace and rest. So let's do that this morning. Let's just be still. We're going to take a minute or two just to sit in the presence of God. I'm not going to sing anything. You just sing out your own song to him if you feel like it, speaking your prayer language. But let's take a moment to encounter God, a heart to heart with him on a real genuine level. Amen. Come on, y'all.
there's a sweet presence of the Lord here today, amen. I just feel impressed to tell you if you're needing a refreshing from God, He wants to turn your desert into an ocean today, amen. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you that these altars are open right now if you need a fresh outpouring of the Spirit. If you're feeling weary, if you're feeling heavy laden, He said He can take that from you. In Jesus' name, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon me. So as we go into this next song, I just want to encourage you, if that's you this morning, come lay those things at the feet of Jesus because He loves you. And He doesn't want to see you endure all that. Not whenever He prayed the price to carry those weights for you.
this morning, there is a Spirit of God here. And these names upon this board are all seeds of life. Every one of them. This is what the Lord was showing me as we were just singing that song. Keep playing that same song. Thank you. That the water of life needs to come upon them today. They need to receive the rain from heaven. And we've had some great rain that has nourished our land. All right, here's your grass looking a little greener these days. Amen. That's what happens when you get rain. When a life receives heavenly rain, it does the same exact thing. It starts to blossom and bloom and sprout new things that God uses to draw them closer to Him. Not draw them closer necessarily to a church, but draw them closer to Him. And so this morning, we're going to pray as she sings this song again, as the worship team does this song again, and we're going to pray over these names. So if you feel led to come up here and pray, then do that. If God gives you a specific name, here's the thing, there may be a specific name on here He wants you to focus on. That's good, right? Then I want you to come up here and you remember that name, and for the rest of the day, I want you to start to pray for this individual, whoever it may be that God has placed upon your heart. Amen? That they receive rain from heaven. So let's do that right now. Amen? Come on. If you feel like you need to come up here and pick a name out, then so be it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father God. Let them receive your rain. Let them receive the rain. Amen. Let them receive the rain. Let them receive your Yes. Let them receive God from you this morning them receive from you this morning whatever it is God in their life let them receive your yes Father God we thank you for James we thank you for David this morning that they receive from you Jesus God we thank you for Becky we thank you for Eddie and Sandy God we just lift them up to you Father that they receive from heaven God I thank you for Tina I thank you for Norris God I thank you for Jorge Father God I thank you for their lives that they receive from you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for Donnie, for Ryan, for Benny, for Frank, for Matthew, for Trinity, for Chrissy. I thank you, God, for their lives, that in the name of Jesus, they would receive from heaven today, that water would, a spiritual water would just flow upon their life. And like a seed sprouting from the earth, that they would, Father God, first take root and grow in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For Albesta, for William, for Brenda, for Mike, God, for Jim, for Delfino, for John, for Alex, for Emerith, Father. I thank you for their lives. For Jacob, for Maria, for Pedro. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For Prophelia, Marissa, Chris, Manuel, for Becky, for Morgan, for Dra, for, Co for Scotty, Kane, Ashley, Destiny, Valita. Uh, I thank you, God, Jesus, for Mary and their lives. I ask you, Lord God, that you would just pour your rain out upon them in the name of Jesus. Come on and pray, church. Come on and pray, church. Hallelujah, God, that you start to pour out your rain in the name of Jesus. That you would pour out yourself upon their lives, Father God. That you would just invest in them, God, with your presence. That the Holy Spirit would just be around them, about them today, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Jerry. For Samuel, for Brianna, for Stevie, for Cassandra, for Ted, for Ashley, for Gabby, God, for Kenny and Kat, and Terry and JR, God, I thank you for their lives in the name of Jesus. That Holy Spirit, you just come and invest into them. Just speak into their life and be with them in the name of Jesus. For Gloria, for Javier, Ernesto, Karen, and Kevin, for Ricardo. Father God, I thank you for Leslie. Alonzo, Jonathan, Alberto, and Anna. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for their lives being touched by you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for Nathan, Tommy, Ariel, Malia, Liliana, Carmen, Lauren, Adriana. Thank you, God, for Shayla, for Tasha, Johnny, Rebecca, for Maddie and Caden, God. Lord, you want to do great things in the lives of these people, so I thank you in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit start to move in their hearts and life. Start to move in their hearts and life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Let them receive your reign, God. Just turn to those kids on both sides of the church today and start to pray for them that they receive from heaven this morning. Start to pray for them this morning that the Holy Spirit would just come in and bless them. Yes, amen. Yes. Yes, let the anointing flow into their life, God. Let the anointing flow into their life in Jesus' name. Let the Holy Spirit just flow into their life this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for the kids. them, refresh them in Jesus' name. Refresh them in Jesus' name. Oh, refresh in Jesus' name. God just, he just showed me this. It's like uh, when you walk into a a, a 7-Eleven and you want to get that big gulp, right? And you you reach for the small cup because you know you should, but then that big one's just looking right at you, right? (laughs) <laughs> or that Slurpee, right? That red Slurpee, that Coke, that Coke Slurpee. Oh my goodness! And that little cup is right there, and that's that's where you're you're kind of at, right? You know that that's okay. But God says this morning, if you'll reach out for that big cup, I'll fill it up too. Woo! I'll fill that up too. But you got to start reaching out in faith a little bit this morning. You want the presence of God in your life? You got to reach for it, Amen. You got to go for it. God can fill every single cup that's known to mankind. You you hear me this morning? Every single one of you are His cups that He wants to overflow. Every single one of you. You're His. You're His big gulp. Amen? Right? The big one. The jug with the handle. He's got you. He's just like this brother right here. You're the jug with the handle, sir. Amen? God wants to bless you that way. He wants to fill you up with His presence. Overflowing in your life. Amen? You know what I'm talking about. And so I thank you, Jesus, this morning for people who are reaching out in faith for more. Lord, let them be filled to, with more. Just be filled with more. Just, stay, just close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes for a second. And just ask God, for more. God, can you fill me with more? Can you fill me with more? Something's fixing to happen, y'all. I'm telling you. God wants these people on this board. Amen? But he's got to have you where you're filled up where you can go get them. Amen? Do you understand where where we're coming from this morning? Because if you aren't filled up, you can't do the work of Jesus Christ. That car going down the road, amen, is a good thing. But it won't get very far unless it's got a a tank that's topped off. Amen? So we're going to stay in this flow this morning until Jesus finishes what he wants to do. And he wants to touch and fill your life. Amen? Don't be looking around the room. Fix your eyes on Jesus this morning right now. God is here and He wants to help you, wants to bless you, wants to, man, just overflow your life. Yes, Lord Jesus. We receive your rain. We just receive the rain this morning, God. We receive your rain. We just receive from you, Father. What the Lord is showing me is that there's some people here that have their hearts so hard against letting God touch their heart and heal their heart. You know, you've gone through some difficult times uh, in the past, like rejection, um, people talking about you or, you know, just a lot of hard, difficult things that if you let the Lord just reach in there in your heart and touch you if you open up your heart to him there will come that rain of refreshing the rain of his love his peace and his joy but as long as see we each and one of us have our own will like we we can say yes or we can say no to things but I just feel like there's a lot of people here even young ones 
you ha- you you put up a front. You put up a sh- you know you you pretend to be one person, but deep down in your heart, you there's some hurt there, and God wants to heal you. God wants to set you free from your past, from that rejection, from that loneliness. But the only way it can happen is if you give Him access to your heart, if you open up your heart, and then you can begin to feel his presence and happiness and joy and peace come over you but it won't happen until you open up your heart to him so if that's you begin to open up your heart to the lord god wants to love on you god wants to bless you god wants to touch your heart nobody else can do it people have failed you maybe your parents have failed you maybe your siblings maybe you know those that you have put you put your trust in they have failed you but God will never fail you God is always there he's always there for you he's always there for you and believe that because his word says that I will never leave you nor forsake you so if you're that person just begin to open up your heart to the Lord because the spirit of God is here the presence of God is here and he doesn't want you to leave the same way that you came in he wants you to leave free free so that when you go out you'll see the light you'll see the sun bright you'll see the flowers blooming you'll you'll enjoy what he has blessed you blessed us with here on earth not only that your your relationship with others will bloom also because of you allowing him to heal your heart forgive that's one thing that i keep on here if you just forgive that's the key if you forgive those that have hurt you then God can bring healing in your heart. Amen. We're just going to stay right in this moment for a little while. for you this morning. We're hungry for you this morning. We're hungry for you this morning, Jesus.
there's a, there's a place in all this where God is trying to get us to. Every single thing that could be done to make a way to the Father has been done. Except for you choosing it. There are still resistant things that God is addressing on your life this morning. I sense that so strongly. As our sister said, there's just these hard, some hard things, some hard places. And that's what God is looking at. In our life, we have these, these intimate times with God, and they're wonderful. Um, especially if we get to be in charge of the prayer, or we get to be uh, the leader in something, or everybody's uh, doing as we're, we're told, right? But that's not how life works. That's not reality. Reality is, is that your life is messy. Reality is, is that your life is not easy. Reality is, is that you're getting older and you can't worship like you used to or you can't intercede like you used to. Reality is, is that making sacrifices is something you don't want to do much anymore. But can I tell you that there's a God who's calling us. He is wooing us back to Him. Every single way to the Father has been made except you receiving if you want more of Jesus, all you have to do is say, yes, God, show me, teach me. He may teach you to do something you've never done before. He may show you how to do something you've never done before in worship. But if all you do is all you've ever done, don't expect any more from God. Because that means you're not yielded to what He wants. You're only yielded to yourself. And that's not how God works. Because He's a perfect gentleman at all times. He's the perfect groom. He's not going to force you to do anything. Are you listening, church? He's trying to get us somewhere. He's really trying. His Holy Spirit is here to change us. But if you keep resisting change, it will never happen for you. pastor I just have to say be hard headed all you want but God is not going to stop pursuing you and you're here for a reason and a purpose so God can change your heart because it takes obedient people doing obedient things in the earth we cannot stay the same young people listen forever in your life forever in your life Seek that next place in God. Seek it out. Don't be satisfied with where you're at either, right? Amen. If you're hungry, come to the altar. Right? You don't need somebody's special permission for that. People of God, it has to be different. It has to be different. The Lord knows that. If real change is going to come, time. Let's sing this song. One more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God.
we'll try again next week. Amen? Before you're seated, say hello to somebody next to you. Discipleship classes every Monday night, 6 p.m. Neighborhood Outreach every Tuesday, 6 p.m., Reagan Park. Evening service every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Intercessory Prayer, every Monday, following classes, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Men's Ministry, breakfast at Denny's, 8 o'clock, November the 5th. Ladies Meeting, brunch and bracelets, November 12th, 10.30 a.m. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. Good morning, everyone. Who can tell me what time it is? Very good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes, indeed. It is offering time, and I ask that everybody remember that the devil is a liar. Just, just in case there was any doubt, okay? okay? The devil is a liar. He will oppose anything that you want to do for good, whatever it might be. If you think about it, he'll tell you you're wrong. It's the way he works. He's trying to stop anything that, uh, anything that anybody does to further the arrival of the kingdom of God on this earth. It's his purpose. At least he thinks it's his purpose. But he challenges us every time. Even when it comes to making an offering, he will tell us we can't afford it. He will tell us that we need that money for something else. He will tell us all kinds of lies in an effort to discourage us from doing what the Bible says is a good thing and ought to be done. Yes. Amen? Amen? Try to remember that. The Bible says that he'll meet all our need. He knows what we have need of, and he will meet it. All we have to do is do what he asks us to do and believe that his word is true. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house to worship you. And we know that part of that worship is the bringing of offerings and gifts. We ask that you help us with that. And we ask that you help us with the attacks of the enemy to discourage us and to lie to us and tell us that, that all of this is going to wind up hurting us when we know your word says that you know what we have need of and that you'll provide it. Help us to believe that and act accordingly. We thank you for all that you do for us, the way that you bless us and take care of us for healing and health. We thank you for these things. And we ask that you bless this offering and that it is received and blessed and that it 
is multiplied by you to do what you desire to be done here in this church that belongs to you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our song Let's give our worship team one more hand this morning. Very good. Sweet presence of God. You know, on the way to church this morning, I had a conversation with my kids about staying expectant in God and, and talking about the, the promise of doing things when we don't want to do them. Amen. How many times have God called you to do something that you don't want to do? Huh? Amen? Can we all agree that God does that? <laughs> That's why He's God. Because He sees the better in us. Amen? He sees the hope inside of us through His Son, Jesus. In fact, we're in that, that place of that, that blood-stained lens, that rose-colored lens where God sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Where anything and everything is possible. It's just our conception of possible. You know, David had a, a situation where he was looking at the impossibility of a Goliath. Where everybody else saw that this was not going to happen on this battlefield today. God put a man in a position where he said, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Say it with me. Yes, it is. The impossible becomes possible with God. In fact, the majority of the time when we walk with God, the miracle situations that we have are because God is doing the great work. And that conversation with my kids ended with one of those amazing Bible stories about in our weakness how God is strong, right? And most of the time when we feel bad and God calls us to do something is when he does the greatest of things. Amen. Yesterday we had a service for our friend Randy who exemplified that very thing. Uh, physically unable to do many things, right? But still to his last breath preached the good news to everybody that he saw. Made a friendship with everybody that he met and loved people every time he had a chance that God gave him a chance to love. And it was an honor to, to have a memorial for him here yesterday and all of his family here. And pray with them and see God move upon their hearts and lives in their place of, 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 of weeping over their brother, their loss of their, their family member. But even more so to see encouragement and closure. Amen? Because God does great things. Even in loss, he creates beauty from ashes. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the life of David. We were, were talking about David the, the last couple of weeks and how David's life was a life that was uh, built on integration from God. It was a life where God put things into David that made him the king that he was, made him the man that he was, made him the servant that he was. How many know that God's process for David is something very similar to our own process in our life? There's always an integration of the next thing where God chooses to use us. And every single time that God puts something into our life, it oftentimes comes with a great challenge. The enemy comes against those things, doesn't he? He doesn't like it when we grow and mature in great faith and great fervor in God. He doesn't like that process at all. In fact, the enemy's process is something very different, uh, very immature in our life. How many know any adults that act like five-year-olds still? I've met one or two of those somewhere. Big, I'm not talking about you this morning, man. <laughs> well, maybe. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, my wife knows very well what that's like in my own heart, in my own life. Because even grown men stumble and fall. But David knows how 
uh, to follow God. In fact, he's called a man after God's own heart for a reason because every time that he did stumble and fall, there was a place of great repentance. In fact, we are a far cry from the way David would repent. Church, you're a far cry from how it should be done. I love you, but you ain't doing it right. <laughs> I do. I love you. But there are some change coming in our nation. Let me preface this with you. In nations around the world today, they are facing trials of many kinds. Their trials that they're facing right now are not like our trials in our nation. Their trials are consistent of greater things. In China right now, if you're caught carrying a, a page of a Bible, not the Bible, but a page of the Bible, that's punishable up to three years in imprisonment. Has anybody ever been in jail? And if you have, have you been there for three years because you simply wanted to read the Word of God? There are people who are facing things that we are not facing in this nation that God is using in awesome ways. Because when they get to go to jail, they consider that an honor to serve King Jesus. You understand? They consider that an honor, a privilege to get arrested. I'm telling you, we don't know how to do it yet. But I want to encourage you that we will before it's all said and done. Before Jesus comes, these things shall come to pass. And I believe that there's going to be a place in understanding that if the world around us is struggling and suffering, we at some point will too. So you had better learn how to call on the name Jesus and really believe Him for things. You had better learn to repent and be repentive in front of your brothers and sisters to stay in relationship with the Father. You had better learn these things and get past these weaknesses in your life. I'm hungry. I don't want to go sing today. I'm tired. I don't feel like coming to church. We don't know yet, but it's going to happen. And all as a pastor I can say to you and do for you is just point to Jesus, the way, truth, and life, and tell you to follow him in everything that he tells you to do. See, that's what David did. And so we have these amazing stories. And I'm not going to be long today. We're running out short on time, but I just want to get a few of these points in about how persecution works. I'm going to talk a little bit about from David's life in 1 Samuel 17 and then 2 Samuel chapter 21. So you can, you can get there with me. 1 Samuel 17, 2 Samuel chapter 21 today. And these are some things that I'm calling this message the five smooth stones. Things the enemy might use in your life and your ministry against your ministry and against who you are in Christ. Before we do that, let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the, the message today. Lord, I thank you for your sweet presence in this church that you speak to these people. God, not to condemn them, but to bring conviction. Conviction is what changes the heart. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to pour your conviction upon your people. Pour your conviction out upon your people today. Holy Spirit, we thank you that we're here. you're here, that we've not... Not left you, Father God, because you've never left us. Thank you, God, you've not ever quenched, we've never quenched you, Father God, to make you leave. That we accept you here, Lord. And we accept your word here. So let it do what it does best, Father God. Let it cut going in and out. And I thank you that these seeds of life will be watered, Lord God. That they will be received by these people in fertile soil today in Jesus' name in their hearts. Amen. First Samuel 17, uh, starting in verse 48 through 54. Let's read that together. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David had put his hand into his bag. He had a little bag of, of stones, five stones that he had in his little bag. And he took out just a stone, one stone. And then he put it in a sling and he slung it. Amen. You've got to sling your rock, right? And he struck the Philistine in the forehead, his forehead. So that the stone sank into his forehead and fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine over the Philistine. He took his sword and drew it out, out of his sheath, and he killed him. And he cut off his head with it, with that sword. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, what did they do? They fled. And now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley into the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell along the road to Shariam, 
even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel turn, returned from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put, it, put his armor in his tent, his own tent, his own armor in his own tent, First Samuel. There's a place in understanding some things here and how the people of God pursued after great victory. First of all, David had to find his place of understanding who he was. And he did that. We talked about that two, a couple weeks ago in the sense of knowing that he was anointed as a king, but he had a shepherd's responsibility. He served in the capacity of who he was in that moment, all along pursuing greater things. Amen. And David's victory over Goliath was one thing. Amen. But the plunder of the tents and taking the ground back was another. But see, when the, the army, the soldiers of Israel saw this great victory, all of a sudden their fear left. Amen. And courage came upon them. How many of you know when you see a miracle before your very eyes in a service, something changes, the atmosphere changes in the whole room? There's a reason that we wait on God in these moments of worship. Why? Because we want to experience miracle things. Why? Because that miracle will impress you. God is an impressive God who does impressive things every single day for those who wait on Him. If you keep trying to do it in your own strength, you'll have nothing impressive to anyone. You see, we try to glorify all these great athletes in the world today. Oh, he's a superstar. She's a hero to many, right? And I'm not saying that God doesn't use athletes. I'm saying that in their own strength, it'll only be what, the, what you can see on TV. And these people work and they, they pursue these, these accolades, right? But can I tell you that in a moment, God wants to use somebody just like you and me because I'm no great superstar. Amen? I'm no great athlete. Come on. But I am in Christ. Amen? I am His Son, bought with the highest of prices to be that. And God wants to use people like me and you, that His victory would come upon the land. Amen? Not just in a field of play on some scoreboard somewhere, but in the highest of heights. Amen? In heaven itself. That's why it says, Heaven rejoices for the salvation of one. The victory is not found, amen, in ourselves. It's found in Christ. David understood that. Who is this wicked devil that would defy my God that day? I think I'll just go handle this business for you, Lord. Thank you very much. And when that took place, guess what? Everybody else got on board. Well, if David can do it, all right, I'm in too. And they started to pursue this evil army and won. Like, won. They took the ground back. They took the ground back. And everything that was left behind, they took that too. You see, God wants to instill in something inside of you that who you are, amen, it matters. Who you are in Christ can overcome great devils. Because it's all about the ground. This is God's planet, amen. He will have it back. And in the sense of knowing that, we must fight. We must fight. Amen. The devil hates when we take the ground back. He hates that. It's another sermon for another time. In 2 Samuel chapter 21, uh, Goliath, he has descendants. And these descendants of Goliath, they wanted to kill David. And there's an argumentation in theology over whether these descendants were Goliath's brothers whether they were his sons, uh, we can talk about that at another time. But there's this sense of his relatives that wanted to, wanted to hurt David. And you can imagine the old family feuds back in the day, right? Well, it was the Billy Bob family on one side of the property and the, the James gang on the other side, right? And then one would kill another, these, these feuds that, that took place all the time. Because it was easier just to shoot somebody than to talk to them. You know, it's getting that way again, by the way. I'm so grateful for uh, God's protection over our church and our people. My kids have been shot at, by the way. <laughs> Devils like to shoot people. And they do that very well. And when David took Goliath's head that day, there were some family members standing on that ridge line that were watching that take place and saying, revenge will be ours one day. Uh, 2 Samuel 21, read this with me, starting in verse 15. 
When the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants with him met down and fought against the Philistines, and David grew faint. Then Ishib ben Ab, who was one of the sons of the giant, Goliath, the weight of whose bronze spear was 300 shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. He wanted to take David's life. But Abishah, the son of Zeruah, came to his aid and struck the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore to him, saying, You shall go out no more with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. David had gotten himself in there in a little a bind, right? Can I remind you this morning that there's a demonic spirit that's assigned to kill you? When you come into a place like Palestine, Texas, that's a very old city. I think I've been told it's the third oldest city in the state of Texas. There are demonic forces that have been here way longer than you have. Way longer. That have taken this ground in many ways. Um, if you look at Palestine's history a little bit and its heritage of government, it's not been a pretty one. It's not been a pretty one. There's been violence. There's been discord, there's been um, all kinds of lustfulness that is to date something we could talk about. And these demonic spirits that are here in this city, they don't want this church to be successful because they don't want you to be successful. And there are demons assigned to who you are. There are demons assigned to come and agitate you at night. There are demonic forces that are assigned to you to steal from you, to destroy and to kill. The communication of that force against us is something to be considered because it knows very quickly how to communicate. There's an authority there that we don't quite understand how well the enemy does what it does. But it does it very well. And it's been doing it for a very long time. So the enemy that you face is not one that's weak in nature. It's one that's under your feet and defeated, yes. But it still has an authority to fight. And it still is fighting. If this morning you woke up and you didn't feel very good, you had to cast that thing away from you, amen? Amen? There's a reason that you don't feel good on Sundays and Wednesday nights. There's a reason. But as a pastor, I understand these situations, so I'm going to go to you and I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to try to encourage you. Keep going. Keep fighting this good fight. It's worth the fight. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. I don't know if I'm preaching good or not. I hope I am. But it's worth the effort spiritually to overcome the physical in our lives. Somebody say, thank you, God, for Jesus Christ coming and making a way so we can follow the Spirit. Because without Jesus, you don't get the Holy Ghost. Jesus' ascension, He sent the Helper, amen? And that Helper is here. He has never left. He has always been here since Jesus sent Him here, since God sent Him here. And I believe that He is here today to encourage you past your pain, past your suffering, past your problems, past your demonic problems that are trying to kill you. Here's the reason. The whole reason is this, is because you've come to this city. You've come, amen, to Palestine, Texas. You've come to Living Springs Church, amen, to get filled with the Holy Ghost so you could go out and do great things. And these demonic powers, they're PO'd at you. They are mad at you whenever you take a step of faith in Christ. Here's one of the situations. Here's one of the things they want to use against you. And this will probably be the one I get to today. Money. 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 It's always been a struggle for people. It's always been a struggle for God's people. Here's the question. What does God expect you to do with it? Have you ever asked God that question about your money? Lord, what do you want me to do with this? Have you ever asked God about your possessions? God, what do you want me to do with this? That's a great question to ask God. Especially since he's the one who gave it to you in the first place. Come on. Let me just remind you of something. People get in debt all the time. People get in trouble with their money all the time because as Christians we have generous hearts. Who here has a generous heart like me? Right, amen? And you have to have it first before you can give it away. My wife reminds me of that all the time. Praise God for wives that remind us of those things. Our spouses that remind us of how we don't have that to give away right now. But you have to have it first before you can give it away. But can I tell you that God wants you to give it away? 
The intent of having possessions is not to covet them. It's to be a blessing with them. Everything you have is seed given to you by God. Everything. The clothes on your back right now. I remember one time I was in church. I was just a 17-year-old. Boy, I didn't know a lot, but I'd just gotten saved, and I knew that God was going to use my life. There was a man who was sitting in front of me, and I was sitting behind him during worship, and God said, I want you to give him your jacket. Give him your jacket. I had a, my mom and dad had just bought me a nice suit for church. Since I was a, I was a born-again believer now, I had to have a nice suit, right? <laughs> and the Lord said, give him your jacket. And I thought, this is, the, this is one of the first times that I had ever done anything like this. And so I did. I took my coat off, and I just put it on his shoulders. Amen. Just put it on his shoulders. Adriana, come here. Come here. <laughs> Turn around and face them. Please, sir. I just did this. Just like this. And I, I sat down. And he turned around and looked at me. And he just started to cry and weep. Just started to weep. And I thought, oh, no. I've done something I shouldn't have done. But no, it was God the whole time. And after the service, that's yours now. God bless you. <laughs> after the service, after the service, God and had let us have a conversation where we could, we could talk. He said, you didn't know this, but tomorrow I have a job interview and I don't have anything to wear. You see, God still does those things. Because he still loves his people and because he's still here to help us and bless us. God still does that, people of God. Everything we have is seed to sow. Every single thing that you own is God's. If you'll find a place of obedience in that, and I said, well, to him, I said, sir, I can't give you the pants right now. We'll have to go, we'll have to go home and change. And, I, and we did that. We had some lunch, gave him the rest of the suit. By the way, he got the job. He got the job. God knows how to give us those things. He knows how to promote our lives, but it comes by obeying Him. If only God can find somebody He could trust. If only God could find a people who He could trust. Mm. You see, God is loaded, man. He is loaded beyond belief. Do you understand? He's the friend that keeps on giving and giving and giving. 1 Chronicles twenty two fourteen. Indeed, I have taken much trouble to prepare for the house of the Lord 100,000 talents of gold. Listen to these numbers. And 1 million talents of silver and bronze beyond measure. For it is so abundant that I prepared timber and stone also. And you may add to them. See, David was going to help his son build a temple. Amen. And Solomon said, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> I have some needs, and uh, I think you can help me out. And without hesitation, David said to his son, yes. Did you know that's how God responds to us? But we must first. Father, I, I have some needs. This will work. This position usually works too. God, I have some needs in my life. I have some things in my life, God. Lord, I have some things in my life. And I don't have it yet, but I need it, God, because we're going to build a temple here, Lord. There's a kingdom business taking place in my life. God, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me, Lord? Father, Daddy, do you hear me? Do you see me? And can I tell you? He does. He does. He sees you. He hears you. And he has everything that you need. But you had better figure out how to ask. When I came here, I had to learn how to ask for things in God. I'm still asking. Because the vision is great, and it's not right in front of my eyes yet. So what have I got to do, church? Ask. Amen. Amen. And I don't stop asking until it happens. Amen. The vision is great for your lives as well. 
You must ask. Amen. Because why? God is loaded. In today's numbers of that gold that was mentioned, 100,000 talents of gold is equal to $204 billion of gold. The silver that was given, the 1 million talents of silver is equal to $24 billion of silver. That was from one man to one son. What's, what's the possibility that God might use you? What's the possibility that God has everything that you need to be a blessing? Luke 16 says this, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. There's a difference there. There's a correlation. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit you to trust the true riches? And if I have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Luke is saying here that you must trust in what God has given you and be faithful with it. You cannot covet it. You cannot despise it. You cannot waste it. How many people do you know that just have wasted wealth? Because they have no relationship with the Father who gave it to them. They'll be judged for that. You'll be judged for that if you're doing that. My hope for you in this life is that you would, you would take an evaluation of everything that you have. I ask wealthy people in our city, I've asked a couple, what is 10% of what you have? And they don't know. All they know is that every now and then they help out somebody in need or they help a church here and there, right? And they feel like that's good enough. But can I tell you, when God moves on somebody's heart, He can pour out billions of dollars through people. $204 billion worth of gold. Amen. $24 billion worth of... That's ridiculous numbers, right? What could a church... What could the church do with that kind of money? Carpets wouldn't be all filthy and dirty. I know that. <laughs> right? Wouldn't be a crack running right down the center of the church. What could God do? He wants to use you for greater things. But if you never believe for it, if you never see it the way that God's trying to get you to see it, and you're coveting what you have, it'll never happen. It's my stuff. It's my gold, my silver, right? But God reminds us in Luke 16 that you must be faithful in the small. And here's the other side of this. If you want to lead the church and be a leader, if you can't handle money, you can't handle people. You must be able to, to add and subtract, amen? Amen. God is really wanting to help us at Living Springs Church. But we've got to come in alignment with some of these things. Here's a thought that I want you guys to, to have when you leave today. We don't give to get. We get so we can give. Do I need to read that again so you can write it down? Or is it on the board there? There it is. We don't give to get, we get so we can give. The blessed life is the life of a giver. And God will test you in this. God will test you in this. Because he knows that he can't give you what's next until you're faithful with what you already have. Yeah. He wants us all to be faithful stewards. Young people, learn how to tithe. I don't care if it's 10 bucks in your pocket. Figure out what 10% is. Amen? And you give that dollar bill. Amen? Amen? Because he'll never give you a resource that you're not able to steward. Hallelujah? Amen. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up to the front. Thank you, Jesus. We'll stop there for today. We'll pick up, we'll pick up next week where we left off talking about fame, fame and fortune. Not supposed to be talking about stuff like that in church, are we? Thank you, Jesus. Would you stand with me? You've been, you've been sitting for a while. Hang on a second. Yes, sir. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. sing this again. So faithful, God. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for how good you are. Thank you for how incredible you are, God. How much you have taken in consideration for us, your people. I ask you today, Lord Jesus, that you would start to lift up a countenance, a courage inside of our people to believe for greater, to believe for more. God, because you are the God of greater, you're the God of more. And I thank you, Lord, that you do that today. Jesus, that the vision that's been cast upon this church will be in the hearts of your people here. That we do not despise the small things, Lord God. That we become very good stewards of what you've given us. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to help us to be even better. Thank you for those who are faithful, Lord. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to increase their faith. Thank you for those who are givers. I ask you to increase their faith. Thank you, God, for those who are workers and laborers. I ask you to increase their faith. Thank you for, God, those who are prayer warriors in our church. I ask you to increase their faith in Jesus' name. Thank you for, God, those who are leaders in our church. I ask you to increase their faith. Now, thank you, God, for my position as pastor, that you increase my faith, Lord. No more grumbling, no more complaining. No more gossiping about what could be. Only speaking life into what is and will be. And I thank you for these things. We are your church. We are your sons and daughters. We are your people. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Let's sing it one time. Oh my life, you have been faithful. Yes. So faithful, Jesus.
Let faith rise on you this week. Trust God. He knows what he's doing. His plan for you is awesome and incredible. Believe him when he tells you to do things. Amen? Okay. But God be with you. We thank you all for coming today. Thank you all for watching my Facebook. We love you so much. Have a very blessed day.